with the camera. We have for you this morning the 2021 Aston Martin Vantage Roadster. And real quick before we get into this, I want to give a shout out to a couple new YouTube members. First, Alkesh Patel and Elias Tapia. I really apologize if, if I mispronounce your name, Elias, your last name. But thank you so much for supporting the channel as YouTube members. It means a lot to me. It helps me produce this content. And it's just a, it's a thumbs up that we're doing the right stuff here. So thank you so much, guys. And if you want to join them, please consider becoming a YouTube member or a patron on my Patreon account. Without further ado, we're going to get into the Aston Martin Vantage Roadster. We're going to answer some questions that are here live. And we'll also trickle in ones that were asked on the miles per hour account on Instagram. That's at miles per hour there. And uh, YouTube's community page. Also, if you want to follow me on TikTok, I do daily videos there. Also at miles per hour. All right, Brett, anything live that we've got going on? And I realized uh, also one more announcement. Sorry. Um, in previous live Q&As, you guys have commented that uh, we're not getting to all the questions and i realized like when jd was covering like we're necessarily scrolling back on all of them um we'll try to do our best here but also if you really want your question answered it's a good opportunity to to maybe just do a little super super chat contribution again another way to support the channel and to make sure that we do not miss your questions okay now we can talk about the vantage roster all right uh peter asked does this have an amr version Okay, Peter asks if the Vantage Roadster has an AMR version like the coupe that offers a manual gearbox. It does not at this point. This is a brand new vehicle, the Roadster version of the, of the Vantage Roadster, uh, Roadster version of the Vantage Coupe, and the Vantage itself was a, a new generation uh, just a year and a half ago. So they have not yet trickled in an AMR version. I would be surprised, frankly, if they do offer an AMR version with a manual gearbox because typically the Roadster models are not um, not necessarily just for the hardcore driving enthusiasts and that's where the manual kind of lends itself. For example, the new BMW M3 that, uh, or new BMW M4 Roadster that was just released is not even going to be available with the manual gearbox even though the regular M3 sedan and the M4 Coupe are. So that is just one thing. I'm not expecting a manual version of this car to be released. What other questions do we have? Um, Harsh asked, don't, uh, do you think this Aston Martin is overall a better vehicle than the F-Type? Harsh asked if I think this vehicle is better overall than the F-Type. And because I'm not going to have a full in-depth review on this one, uh, I can, I'll talk about competitors and I'll kind of come to some conclusions. The F-Type is an interesting vehicle. So the, the direct competitor to this one would be the F-Type R convertible. This vehicle is $150,000 to start, as tested as 47 grand in options. So it's almost $200,000. An F-Type R convertible, $107,000. So as tested, almost half the price. And that vehicle has a supercharged V8 and it makes 575 horsepower. This twin turbo V8, it makes 503 horsepower. So less power in this, uh, but the price being so much higher, I, I don't actually think the F-Type does a great job competing with this vehicle for all the measures that matter as a Roadster buyer. A Roadster buyer cares a lot about how it looks and cares a lot about the ride quality and just the prestige of driving a vehicle like this. The soundtrack matters. The F-Type R soundtrack is, is great. Um, I think this sounds better. I think it's far more beautiful of a vehicle. Do I feel like it's an extra, well, let's talk about starting figure. Do I feel like it's an extra $43,000 more of a car? Yeah, I do. So I think this is better than an F-Type R convertible. The other competitor of this would be the Porsche 911 Carrera S Cabriolet, but I'll wait to see if someone asks about that to answer that question. Someone did. Someone did. <laughs> okay, who asked about that? Um, Domi Nord. Domi Nord asks whether this is better than the Porsche 911 Carrera S Cabriolet. The, another vehicle that would compete with this, the Carrera S Cabriolet, uh, in between the price of the F-Type R convertible at 107 and 150, the 911 Carrera S Cabriolet is 123, I think, $123,000. And it offers a manual gearbox, which the Roadster of this one doesn't. So that, that sort of falls outside of the parameters I just set up where like typically convertible vehicles don't offer the manual. The 911 Carrera S Cabriolet does offer a manual gearbox. So if you care about that, 
you'll be leaning more towards that. The driving dynamics of the 911 Carrera S Cabriolet are really good. The driving dynamics of this are also very good. I would say the 911 Carrera S Cabriolet is a little sharper. Um, do I think it's as good looking? Not a chance. No way does that look as good as this one does, especially in profile. There's that big, big hump on the 911 Carrera S Cabriolet that I just don't like. This like, just so clean. The deck is beautiful. This is a much better looking car, in my opinion, than the Carrera S Cabriolet. Therefore, I think it's worth the extra money you're paying for it. And exclusivity. You see a lot of 911s around. You don't see very many of these. Um, Lego Dude asked if it's a 10-speed automatic. Lego Dude, it is not a 10-speed. It's an 8-speed automatic sourced from ZF. You showed like the front end a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So this is sort of controversial, the front end of this vehicle. Do people like it? Do they not like it? Um, this one, so you can get the Vantage with a mesh in the front grille. I don't think that looks as good as this. I like the slats in it. And the only thing I really don't like about the front end, I think, is the size of the headlight. They look a little small to me. It's like the shape and size of them and placement on the hood. Because I, I blocked them out in my view, like blocking them out, it, it looks way better in the front end. What do you think, Brett? Um, I'm with Jor on this one. I was looking at it and I was thinking like, oh, this thing kind of looks like a Miata. Like a Miata. Dude, <laughs> it's the headlights. Yeah. The headlights look just like an ND Miata. No, seriously. Especially like from this angle. Yeah. Like I would not think this is an Aston Martin. So it's, it's the headlights. Yeah. I'll tell you right now. It's the headlights. They, they messed up on the headlights because the grill is all Aston Martin. Mm -hmm. Seriously, like, I don't know how to, let me try to do it on here. Where can I block it out? That's hard to do. But like. Block out the headlight. <laughs> okay, there we go. Block out the headlights like that, and it looks Aston Martin. It almost it like looks like Vulcan, like awesome. But you add them back in, and now it looks like the big braces on the grill. That's funny, Aaron. Uh, then now it looks like a Miata, right? But that's the only part about the car I don't like love, and it's just the headlights because the rest of it is beautiful. Aiden said it's like a Mazda Miata on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it have to be a drug reference? Why does it got to be a drug reference? I think it's just, it's, uh, <laughs> maybe it's the extra smile. Yeah. Just like, just, yeah. yeah. I love it. Lego dude said it's the uh, Miata Martin. Miata Martin. That's, I love alliterations, and that one kills me. That's good. I love it. Okay, what other questions do you have rolling in on YouTube? Um, Jor asked, can you show the trunk? I can show the trunk. You're also going to see a gym bag, um, but I can show the trunk. Here, I'll show you the key at the same time. Look, Aston Martin key. This thing these, is. These keys are really big. They're super big and it's really heavy. Yeah. So you press the trunk button and look at this. It doesn't pop up like at all. It's like, did I actually release the trunk? Apart from hearing it, you have no idea. And then you lift up. And sure enough, it's got a trunk. Take this out. It's fairly small. Yeah, it's a pretty small trunk. It's also a smaller Roadster. And again, it's accounting for the fact that you got to stow the top in some place. So it's not a big trunk. I think it's seven cubic feet, seven cubic feet. Whereas like the 911, you have the rear seats in that one. So that's the trunk. What else do you guys want to see? Um, big Smokey asked, would you consider this the British counterpart of the AMG GTC Roadster? Uh, no. This rides way better than the GTC Roadster. It looks better in my opinion too. I like how the GTC looks. I think this looks better. The, the GTC Roadster was really pretty rough. I found the ride quality of that vehicle to be pretty darn rough. This one rides majestically by comparison. So I, it, from that category, no. Um, size, this is a little smaller than the GTC Roadster. The GTC Roadster has that crazy long hood. Um, interior is going to feel about the same size hey it's not a bad comparison i just i think that this rides a lot better i'm gonna to have to go with the gtc on this one you yeah i love that car yeah i mean so here's the thing i actually like the first generation of the amg gt that how the front end looked i think the the new panamericana grill is too much on that car that's just my thoughts um can you pop the hood yes i can pop the hood which i have to do from the passenger side but yeah, that's a british vehicle even though the steering wheel's on the left-hand side, they're like, oh, we gotta make sure you remember it's a British vehicle, you gotta go. Oh, by the way, the doors open at an upward angle, like all Aston Martins, which is cool. So if you're parked next to a curb, you're never gonna hit that. I love that detail. It looks kinda like a trip, like right here. Yeah. It looks kinda trippy. Yeah, it's cool. All right, popping the hood, looking at the engine. 
So the engine uh, pushed pretty far back, uh, which is pretty cool. So that, that really helps with the weight distribution. This is a four liter twin turbo V8 sourced from, so you want to talk about counterpart to an AMG, sourced from AMG. So it's a four liter twin turbo V8 from AMG. It makes the same 503 horsepower and 505 pound-feet of torque as other AMG applications. Aston Martin said they fiddled with it a little bit. Certainly their exhaust system sounds a little different, especially in the higher part of the RPM. At low RPM, it sounds like an AMG. This is also funny, like Aston Martin, usually these plaques right here, they used to say, oh, like built by Jim Jims, or well, I don't know what name. Jim I could, Jims. <laughs> Brett, Jim. Brett, I couldn't think of a name on the spot. I couldn't think of a name, but they said final inspection by MVEC operations, like, Oh good, their operations department inspected it. It's like, I, I want to see a name, I want to see something cool, but it's still a plaque, it's still awesome. But the engine is phenomenal. I love this engine in all AMG applications. It's great here too. Can we listen to it? Yeah, you can listen to it. I think it's time. Brett's tuning into the live Q&A asking questions. Yep. Can we listen to it? Will you rev it? It's because a few people ask it, and I just, I don't want to go over four different names. No, for people that's fine, it. that's fine. Honestly, guys, my favorite part about doing this is watching Brett's face from behind the camera because it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god, that's loud. Have mercy. Does that not sound good? How is that stock? That's a stock exhaust. That does not sound stock. Like, I think this car has the particulate filter that's required of all modern vehicles. <laughs> But it didn't, it didn't, certainly, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, why well, I can't think of the word, it doesn't stop you at a certain RPM. Soft limiter. It doesn't soft limiter you, it lets you run out all the way to, what is it, 7,000 RPM. So, yeah, it sounds good. Wow. The pots are mean, the pots are really mean. Uh, what other questions do we have? 503 horsepower, showed the engine a second ago, but 503 horsepower, 505 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 is three and a half seconds. So real quick, especially for being a rear wheel drive vehicle, that's pretty impressive. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know, if it, I don't think it broke it, but I think it probably kind of blew it out. So. Oh, the audio is sometimes. Is it, can they hear me? Can you guys hear me right now? Yeah, you know, hopefully. The audio sucks. Okay, well, so maybe like, here, do it again. Yeah, you can't hear me. Okay. Dang. Uh, yeah, hang on, let me just try this. Wait, how did you know that you asked this? Oh, yeah. Oh. They're lying. Ah. You can, so you guys can hear me, right? You can hear me? Sort of like sounds far away. Finally, yes. Okay, Aaron says finally yes. Okay, I had plugged it, plugged it back in. Here, go do it a little further away because yeah, yeah. the mic can't handle the exhaust. <laughs> really, it can't handle it. Alright, they can hear now. Okay. I'll stand back. Okay, I love the exhaust note in this. I think that sounds better. That's fantastic. I think it sounds better. Okay, uh, what's the next question? Um, Harsh asks, does this have the old Mercedes infotainment that like, is bad? Yeah. yeah, it does. It does. So, like, go to the other side. So, flush door handles, you press right here, and the back pops out. The doors open real easy, and they stop at any point, which is really cool. So, yeah, the really? infotainment. Yeah. So, so the infotainment is old Mercedes Benz. Yeah, sorry, the windshield's gonna get you. 
Uh, old Mercedes-Benz Command infotainment, which was oh, really yeah, not good. Really not good. It's not a touchscreen. You don't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You have to use the scroll wheel down here, which I don't mind using something, but the menu structure is just so very confusing. Like nothing, you, to get to anything, it's really clunky. And the system isn't slow. I, here's the best thing I can say. It's good for Aston Martin. Aston Martin has have never had good infotainment systems, but this is this is pretty pretty bad, pretty archaic. So not a fan of the infotainment, um, touchscreen, whatever. But the fact that it doesn't have Apple CarPlay kind of just kills it for me. But the rest of this cabin is super nice. I love this like this leather housing for all the the gauge cluster, the digital gauge cluster. Still, it looks very like... Batman, right? Yeah. It looks bad. It's just sort of like coming out at you with the wings. I think it's just so cool. And the red stitching is beautiful. This kind of squared off steering wheel is awesome with these huge aluminum paddle shifters. They're massive. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, someone wants to hear the horn. Hear the horn, okay. From inside, this is the horn. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. It wasn't... What was the... Oh my gosh. What was the ID4? Was it? No, it... Well, he, it was something with such a dinky horn. We were no, like, like me. it was like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> That's the best you could find. I like that these these buttons. So they're drive select buttons, and a lot of automakers have started copying this. But I like that Aston Martin's been doing it for a while, and it, the V formation is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, what other questions do we have coming in? Uh, is the interior creaky? No, that's no, that's that's pretty solid. That's super solid. That's nice. No. I didn't hear one creak. No, that's really solid. That's the first car I've seen like that. Yeah. Especially on the dashboard, there's usually something like in here. Yeah, especially this stuff. Yeah, that's or, usually. Or in here. Wow. All right, I'm impressed. Yeah, Rops. no creaks. No creaks, guys. Solid. Is it someone just harsh or sass? Is the interior quality bad, like with all the plastic buttons? And that's a no. No, no. It's it's really, really good, good quality. I like the neural finishes on things for the dials. The design of like, you know, they could have just done air vents, but they did like this really cool leather wrapping around like a cool aluminum housing for it. It's just, it's rad. You feel like the extra money you're spending is kind of going towards something. Um, Lego did ask how big are the tires? Uh, good question. I think they're 295 right here. Yeah, 295 rear, uh, 245 front. Oh, that's so a pretty offset. 45 front. Uh, two, oh, nice. 255. Okay, so I was. Oh, uh, 255 front, 295 rear. So you got a good solid width in the rear. Uh, but really interesting for this car, it really doesn't want to drift or do anything like that. Um, I turn off traction control and you bin it and the system will delay power delivery to the very end. It just doesn't want to just like do immediate like tail happy maneuvers. Because that's, I guess, you can't be, you can't be a British hooligan. I guess you got to be formal and proper. Yeah, Nick wanted to see a donut. No, nah, can't show you a donut. We can go do it. We can go get donuts. We can go get, yeah, we can get. We'll get the you Randy's donut. Donuts is now oh, in Ghost Mesa. We can go get, we can get, get a donut. Should we drive it now? Let's do it. Okay, let's go drive. Um, Aiden asked, Mr. Miles, where's the gear lever? Mr. Miles. But wow. I've never been referred to as Mr. Miles. I feel Mr. so Miles. formal. It, the, uh, the drive button is here. There is no lever. So instead of doing a, a lever, a formal lever, they put them as buttons. So park, reverse, neutral, and drive are here. So we've been in park. To start it, you hit this glass button there. Brett's gonna put on his seatbelt, as am I. Safety first. Safety first, guys. You're gonna have a bit of fun. I'm gonna roll the windows up so that there's not too much buffeting. You do have this partition between the passengers, which you can't show over the camera, I know it's just, I think it's all jacked, but um, I said the drive button's too far. It's not that far. No, it's really not. So I'm sitting here, and this is not much of a stretch for me at all. Just put my hand over. It's not too far. You're good, Harsh. You're good, Harsh. Also, um, I put a, a teaser photo on Instagram of this over here. 
I think Harsh, what did you guess? Was it a Kia? Harsh guessed a Kia. So I'm gonna call you out for that. That's not okay. <laughs> not okay for Aston Martin to hear that. Just kidding, man. Um, that was a very pretty vague photo. Not a lot of people got it. Aiden now said, uh, Mr. Miles, where's the turn signal? Turn signal is up here, where all turn signals are. Uh, you can't really hear it because we'll have traffic, but the start-stop works, so. I don't, I don't like the start-stop. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like it much, especially when you got a V8. Yeah. But I'm just like listening for the turn. It sounds like, like Aston Martin turn signals sound a little like a heartbeat. They're like, thunk, 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 thunk. They're not, I don't, typically I want to turn off a turn signal because it's annoying, but this one it's like, oh, I'll leave that going. Okay, we're gonna turn off the start-stop system. So the engine is on all the time. And we're gonna put it in Sport Plus. And you just hear the baffles and the exhaust yeah. open up. Uh, what's the zero to 60? Three and a half seconds. have about this vehicle we'll I'm sure answer some of it just by driving it oh here well let's do the top so this was sort of counterintuitive for me the the top raising and lowering is here and I thought okay press down to make the top go down pull up to make the top go up it's actually just the direction that you want the top to go so press down to make the top go forward and up and this happens really fast yeah that's a really good one. we're done like that's how fast it was down does it stay here? Okay. Okay, so that's top up. I guess I didn't show you. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, I didn't show you with the top up, the car just sitting there. No, I'm not going to make that way. I probably could. I probably could. Anyway, okay, so. But they didn't. <laughs> they, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 were not they did not. Could you guys see that on camera? The guy oh, just yeah. sort of like blew right through that light. Anyway, okay, so top down you pull back. So it's like, I want the top to go back. This takes less than seven seconds. We're done. That's, a that's super it. Fast it's one. so fast as a, as a convertible top goes. So that's pretty cool. Kevin, we, we tested the horn. You missed yeah, the did, horn. We test. did test the horn. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do it one more time. I did, I did a baby horn test, so I don't want to insult people. Yeah. I don't want to worry them. Like, oh, there's something to be alerted to. What other uh, What other questions do we have? Um, do you think uh, this is a good F1 safety car, or should, have, should Aston have picked a higher-end model? Oh, yeah, that was Harsh's question, right? Okay, so, so yeah, Aston Martin now competing in Formula 1 or returning to Formula 1. They used this vehicle as one of their safety cars, and Harsh is like, should they have used this or should they have used like some more prominent Aston Martin, a DBS Superleggera or something? I think the reason they use this is because they want to bring visibility to their new model. The Vantage Roadster is their latest thing that they're introducing. So that's why they used it. I think it's beautiful. So I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with using it as a safety car, right? The performance is definitely high enough. So. Yeah, it's, it's pretty darn quick. So I don't think there's any issue with them using it as a safety car, Harsh. I think it's just fine. Uh, Lethal donated $2 and said, how is the infotainment system? Is it dated? Lethal, thank you so much for your contribution on Super Chat. I really, really do appreciate it. The infotainment uh, is old Mercedes-Benz technology. It is definitely dated. It's unfortunately one of the things that really kind of holds the, the interior back because the rest of the interior I think is fabulous but the infotainment is just it's clunky and it's not a touch screen and it doesn't have Apple CarPlay and it's kind of frustrating as a luxury vehicle you think okay I want the full experience if they were using the latest Mercedes-Benz tech which I understand Mercedes-Benz not being like yeah we'll give you the latest stuff we have but the fact they're using old Mercedes-Benz tech and not good tech I didn't like command in Mercedes-Benz vehicles before I don't like it here it works if you get used to it, but it's not a great infotainment system. Again, thank you so much for the super chat. Aiden likes the Tesla. You like the Tesla? Is that on what? Yeah, so that one's on wider tires. 
and probably wheels than a normal Tesla. That almost looks like there's camber to those wheels. It's cambered That's in. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. it's cambered in. Um, Hate that car. The Toyota CHR. Hate uh, is a strong word. I, I extremely dislike the Toyota CHR. You've got a few people calling you Mr. Miles now. Mr. Miles! Uh, I N A N said, Hey, Mr. Miles, would you take this over the Maserati Gran Turismo Cabriolet? Is this the is this Ion Khan? Who's been commenting for a long time? It's Thank Ion Feroz. Oh, Feroz. Okay, so Ion, would I take this over the Maserati uh, Gran Turismo convertible? That is a car with a great soundtrack. This is a great soundtrack. That's arguably better. Ferrari sourced V8 engine. Oh, I think. Not as good. Yeah, but I think I I think this looks better. I like the Gran Turismo. I really do like how it looks. I think this looks better. I like the, the ride quality in this better than that car. This is, again, that vehicle still exclusive as a Maserati vehicle. I would argue this is more exclusive. I'd probably take this. That's hard. That's really hard. If you could find a really good deal on one of the, the Maserati Gran Turismos, I might be swayed. But if we're talking about you just have whatever money, then I would take this. But if... Uh, if money came into play, if you're considering price, that's a, that's a really good deal. Oh, the pop right there! Oh my gosh, that was vicious! Oh, that was, that was so, so good. good! I hope you guys can hear that. I might actually need it for the top of it because we're going to get on the highway here. Aiden is really wanting you to say a curse word, but that's just no. That's just not me, Aiden. That's not me, man. Different channel for that. I keep it clean. I keep it clean. The car doesn't. The car keeps it very dirty. All of that, I didn't actually get the top all the way up. Whoops, that's my beat. I need to drop down below 30 miles per hour. Uh, I got something behind me. Alright, sorry. The car, the car is going to beep at me a little bit here. Okay, we have an exhaust now. Yeah, we have an exhaust.
They didn't want the 911. They wanted something different. They didn't want, even want the F-Type. They wanted something different, something special. Well, I have to ask um, Harsh's question because of how polite this wording was. Oh, good. Harsh, see, this is what we like. We like polite, clean language. No, this is more than what you're thinking. Oh, okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Dear Mr. Miles Brandman, do you think that the AC vents are too basic and not that good looking? Kind regards, <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> you addressed a letter to me, Harsh. harsh. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, AC vents, right? Yeah. Um, I sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was that was my fault. Um, no, I, I don't think they're too basic. I think if you take away the housing, yeah, they would just kind of be basic AC vents, but they got some neural finishes here. And the actual housing, this looks like a pair of goggles to me. I think it's cool. A little bit. Yeah, a little like goggles. That they, they angled up the AC vents. I think that's cool. So, no, I don't think it's... Uh, uh, dear... Uh, Kindest, harsh. I I do not believe that what they bequeathed to the Aston Martin Vantage in terms of AC vents is uh, unsubstantiated for the vehicle's caliber. Uh, yours truly, Mr. Miles. There you go. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, launch control. Does it have launch control? It does have launch control. Oh. Find out how it is. Put hard on the brake. Give it full gas. So it delays power. It still sounds good. Though. Yeah, it sounds good and it really gets moving. But like I said, off the line, it really delays power. Oh my god. What? Ed Star. Ed Star? With a hundred dollars. Oh, Ed, my goodness. My says, goodness, Ed. Is there room for a body bag behind the seats? Happy Memorial Day weekend, everyone. <laughs> Ed, you're the best. I really so, so appreciate you and, and your support of the channel. Behind the seats, well, so, Ed, did you see the trunk space that I showed in the beginning? Certainly not enough for a body bag um, uh, that, that you might fill with, with candy or with flowers, uh, anything positive. Um, a bag that's, that's the size of a body, right? There is not enough space for that. There is a little compartment here which you can open up, and it's actually pretty big. Sorry, I was in manual mode. Back to uh, drive mode. So it's actually pretty good size. You can fit a lot in there. I'm not looking at it, guys. Don't worry, I'm looking at the road. But I just want to show you. So that's the largest compartment in this vehicle. There is no glove box. No what? glove box there. So that is your glove box and the trunk. Storage apart from that, you've got like the door pocket right there and that's that's pretty much it. It's a small vehicle. They didn't think about you know big trips in this thing. The trunk is probably big enough for two good sized duffel bags. I don't think you'd fit a set of golf clubs back there either. It's not wide enough. So that's that's kind of the that's the limiting factor I would say for you know a, a well-to-do gentleman who would like to go golfing and and enjoy the pleasures of life with ample storage space, this is not gonna really fill your need. The new Corvette, yeah, it's got plenty of storage space in that one. Uh, the 911, yeah, you're gonna fit plenty in there with your uh, combined front trunk and the rear seat space. This storage space is a limiting factor, for sure. Um, okay, we got a few questions coming in. Have Thank you, you again, Ed Stark. Have you ever been pulled over for speeding uh, during one of your videos? Uh, I have not, thankfully, and I would like to keep it that way. I think we should get pulled over for the content. I think we should not, Brett. Would oh. you please get out of the car? We <laughs> don't uh, watch you anymore. Way. <laughs> We're good. Uh, no, no pulling over. I'm, I am a responsible driver. I only spend limited quantities in certain applications. Um, Made in Heaven said, uh, what's the miles per gallon? Uh, 20 combined. What? It's actually not bad. Wow. However, it's a pretty small fuel tanker. I, I imagine it is because I've bled through uh, three quarters of a tank with uh, nary more than, I think, like 100 miles. Mm -hmm. So, it might be a pretty small tank. Um, lethal donated $5 and said, if you guys ever find yourself in New York, would you be interested in reviewing our 1964 Impala? 100%. First of all, Lethal, thank you so much for the contribution. And second, 100%. Uh, 
I would be so happy to drive that. That would be amazing. And uh, I, fun fact, I used to live in Boston and I worked in New York for a small period of time. So it's not out of the question. I also have family in the New Jersey, New York area. So it's not out of the question that I would be in that area. The turning radius is great. It's really good. Very good. But thank you so much for the uh, Super Chat contribution and the offer of that vehicle. Um, reach out to me at um, info at miles per hour um, and we'll be, we'll get in touch. And, uh, and if I'm in the area, I would definitely go drive that and do a POV. Blake, why did you say my name? <laughs> Don't say my name. <laughs> say my name. Um, Ed Star said, seriously, happy Memorial Day weekend, gang. Happy Memorial Day weekend, Ed. Thank you so much for your support of the channel. What a guy. You're the best. I super appreciate you. And your great comments. <laughs> and your love of Aston Martins. Ed was the reason I... That's weird that it, like, the same road going in that direction, we had no connection problems, but coming back, we did. I think it's because the the place where we do the U-turn, mm. that's right where it starts to get bad. Oh, okay. So maybe it was just It was delayed. Bit, yeah. Do we have another launch control? I think so. You can never go wrong. No. No. I mean, you just, just cover your butt. Do launch control. amount of exhaust noise that gets into the cabin. Uh, they don't pipe it in through the speakers. That's good, natural That's really V8 good. music. Please, V8, don't go anywhere yet. Um, Kegswell Gaming asked if there's any pops. There, there are some, definitely, there pops. definitely pops. Um, let's put the top down, which, okay, I'm, I'm finally getting, it took me forever to figure out the pullback, the top goes back, and, uh, so there are pops, so let's throw it in uh, neutral. We got Elon Musk in here, so. Oh, Elon Musk is here, that's great. So, wow, that's a large truck. Uh, you can't even hear the pops, because it's so loud, hang on. Let me put the windows up real quick. Harsh how's the 360 camera? Oh, uh, it's actually decent, camera? it's decent. Yeah, there is, there you go, there's your pops. There are your pops. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> The F3, F650 next to us, revving it out. Um, but uh, was a 360 camera, so, so you can press the camera button and it shows up here. Uh, and it's not like bad quality or anything like that. It's it's a decent 360 camera. All right. Oh, there are, your, there are some pops. Oh, I hope yeah. you guys can hear those. Are there pops on like a downshift? Uh, well, I'm, Going from two to one. Still is one. Not yet, not yet, still. Nope. There you go. Pop on the down. Oh, no. oh, there are pops, guys. There are definitely pops. Oh, the pop on the ship. The snarl on the upshift is so good. It's so good. Oh, wow. I'm all more in love with this car every second. Love it. That's very nice. I love it so much. All right, any other questions coming in? Uh, I think people are just really liking the sound. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Every time. Wow, that's so good. That's an airplane. Right by an airport, that is an airplane. Up on 40 minutes. Okay. Just let you know. All right, guys. Probably gonna wrap it up soon here. And I'm definitely this time gonna put the top up fully before I get on the highway. What other questions do you have? Anything more about the Aston Martin Vantage Roadster? Um, Brett, were there any on the text that? Oh yeah. Text on the on the questions from Instagram and YouTube's community page. I don't want to um, leave anyone out. Is it faster than an NSX? 
Roxy has? Uh, zero to 60, well, so the NSX has all wheel drive, but it's heavier. I think zero to 60, the NSX is gonna be quicker. This isn't John Wayne, right? That is John Wayne. Uh, Elon said he just passed us. Oh, really? Yeah, he said, he said, uh, Hey, we just missed that, Elon Musk. I know. How? Man, yeah. Imagine that. I mean, no, that's crazy. I mean, we are in Southern California, and Tesla's not far away, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. With the top up, like so much quieter now. Still sounds good, though. Still sounds good. Uh, faster than NSX. The top speed of this is 190. I think the NSX's top speed is about the same. Off the top of my head. Because I mean, strictly speaking, faster is top speed. I think the top speed of the NSX is about the same. Maybe um, a tiny bit less. Um, Ed Starr said Aston Martin uses a carbon fiber drive shaft. I did not know that. I didn't know that. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, again, you're paying a little more for something that has been gone through to an extra level than something like an F-Type. So I wouldn't, wouldn't be terribly surprised. But that's an awesome bit of knowledge, and thank you for sharing. Uh, any other questions on the text? And then we'll probably, uh... Uh... uh gotta answer all of them. Okay, we got all the questions, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I will see you again next time. Thank you so much for the contributions on Super Chat, Patreon, YouTube memberships. You guys are the best. And, uh, look for POV drives of this coming to the channel soon.